Hello, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon. Today I'm here with my friends from policemag.com. We're going to be doing a series of video clips on police combative strategies and tactics. Strategies and tactics is something that we focus on, but I don't think we focus on enough. Now, strategies and tactics. First of all, what is a strategy? Strategy actually means generalship, all right? And a strategy is the overall vision of what needs to be obtained, and the tactics are what is used to obtain that particular goal. Now, we have been using strategies and tactics since mankind. Not just sterling military, military operations, they are used for everything. I'll give you an example. Since the beginning of evolution, how could we survive when we had no fur, no claws, no teeth? Sure, we started to gain better cognition, but the strategy of made us survive is when we started to learn to work with each other. That's how we could defeat, defeat mammoths and uh, the animals of such nature, because we started to work cohesively in a strategic approach to, to capture these animals. Now, strategies and tactics, obviously, has been the key to all military engagements. Those who deploy superior strategies and tactics will be the victor. But we're going to be talking about in police combatives when it comes to strategies and tactics. And I'll tell you why. Most of you understand this principle here. When we come to police combatives, and you know I use the term police combatives, because that's a tactic and a strategy right off the bat. The strategy for, for using that term is to prime you to understand what you're doing. To use a term like defensive tactics is inconsistent with your job description, by the way. Defensive tactics means you are defending against an assault. What are you doing that is defensive? Yeah, you might block something, but your offense, you are the offensive line. You are the one going into their lair. You are the one stopping them. You are the one who is offensively controlling or responding to that call in an engagement. If they throw something at you, pow, whatever the counter might be, you are still going to get them. They're going to be arrested for you. Now, self-defense, now that's a different situation. That you might pop counter, boom, and then get out of there. All right, that's all you're required to do, but you're sworn law enforcement. So with that engagement, you are not defensive tactics. Victory was never obtained through defense alone. So why are we priming our subconscious with words like defensive tactics? Words like step back, block, parry, counter. Those are all priming terms to teach you to respond to a physical threat. Guys, if you get eight hours a year in any type of physical combative training, how proficient do you think you're going to be by responding to an assault? All right. So we have to start to take that and change that strategy and tactic. What is the tactics I'm using? The tactic I'm using is the proper terminology in verbiage that is consistent with your job performance. Now, there's been a lot of studies on this. As a matter of fact, uh, my friend Amori Morgado, who is a police columnist for a police magazine, wrote an article. You can tell we probably spent too much time together. Talk about training terminology. I'm, exact, I'm going to explain to you what we're talking about here, just what I shared with you. New York University. Now, this was mentioned in Malcolm Gladwell's book called Blink. Great book, by the way. You should read it. All right. They wanted to measure activity of an individual based on the terms and words they used. All right. Now, they did it over a, uh, a whole semester. So it was a lot of data they collected. But they gave one group a study or a, a, a word assignment that they read. And within that word assignment was riddled with uh, uh, anger, frustration, impatience, etc. The other group understanding, sympathy, empathy, compassion. And they wanted to see if there was any change in behavior. Well, there was significant change in behavior from one group to the other. Now, priming has been a strategy be used by, I mean, has been used by everybody from marketing, sales, politics, uh, relationships. Everything is based on tactics and strategies. We're going to be focusing in these very ser this video series on strategies and tactics. I'll give you one right now. Now, most of the time, if we're teaching combatives, all right, hit here, hit here, hit here, all right, the strategy would be, all right, I want to take this individual down. The strategic approach to this hit to, was to cause oh, that response. And that's the reason why I'm striking him, because I only want to hit him here because I want his back here. Boom! So I can follow it up with a different application. So my strategic approach is to take this individual down. 
My tactic is to hit in a certain location, oh, cause a specific response for the follow-up that I want to obtain. Contact cover. What is the strategic approach and what are the tactics being used with a contact cover? Striking. The, stra the strategic approach is to strike for a specific purpose. The tactic might be this, might be this, might be whatever it is, but it's really to obtain a specific goal. Police combatives is totally different than any other fighting system out there. Nobody fights like us. Why? First of all, we don't pick our environment. We don't pick our opponent. We don't pick the time of day. We don't pick what we wear. We don't have the option to flee. We have the option to tactically uh, relocate. All right, so we still have a sworn responsibility to arrest that person. All right, so now we have restrictive body armor. We have tight pants. We have gun belts. We could be working 15 hours a day. We could be, work, we could be in the snow. We could be in, in, in slick environments, dark environments. So nobody fights like us. So we must learn the strategic approach would to be trained for your profession. I'll give you an example. I had a tactical team. I was in state, I can't remember what state it was, but they said, would you come out and check our tactical training out? I said, I'd be honored to. Well, when I got there, um, they're doing a lot of ground fighting, grappling. Uh, they're slicked out, which means they're just wearing BDUs and, and T-shirts. And um, a lot of the grappling that they were doing, I'm like, well, that's pretty cool stuff. I said, but what's your really strategy for this? Uh, what well, we're training, I said, because well, yeah, I want you to know that it has no application for a SWAT environment, none whatsoever. There's no way you can do those with full kit on. With, a, with your full kit, I mean, your level four, your helmet, M4, there's no way you can do that. Now, this is what I told them. What is your strategic approach for that? Strategy should be realized, well, what is a combative arena of a SWAT operator. What is he wearing? What environment does he w uh, work in? All right, so now the tactics should be designed to fit the operator. So I don't think, I shared with him, I said, I don't think this is a very good strategy. Now, if you told me, well, Kev, we're just doing some physical exercises and some team building, that's a different strategic approach, which makes more sense to me. I said, but if you only have these guys twice a month, you probably don't want to be wasting valuable time doing a training environment that, or a training drill that is inconsistent with their performance. That's what I'm talking about tactics and strategies. So we'll be doing a lot of that in the future, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon. Thanks for joining us.